So it sounds like we have a full council tonight of all 14, of which I believe 10 of us are present and four of us are Zoomed in. Okay, very good. Thanks everybody for participating. Uh, moving to item number four, which is agenda reminder for everybody to please use the microphone because this is being recorded on BATV. And moving then to item five, items to be removed, added, or changed on tonight's agenda. Does anybody have anything? All right, moving right along. Uh, presentation of tonight's consent agenda. Alderman Chancellor. <clears throat> Thank you. Your Honor, the consent agenda reads as follows. <clears throat> to accept and place on file the Committee of the Whole Minutes for August 11th and August 18th of 2020. Plan Commission Minutes for July 1st, 2020. The Building Report for August 2020. Approvals, August 21st, 2020 payroll in the amount of $900,335.81. And September 4th, 2020 payroll in the amount of $889,239.89. The accounts payable check register in the amount of $4,429,423.48. The July 2020 City Council Financial Report. For approval, the Committee of the Whole Executive Session Minutes for July 14th, 2020. Ordinance 20-55, annexing roads across NICOR right-of-way. Ordinance 20-56, amending the land use map for the comprehensive plan of the City of Batavia for 2041 Slayers Court. Ordinance 20-57, amending the official zoning map, 950 Moorhead Drive, 734 Ridgelawn Trail, 2041 Slayers Court, 960, 970, 1101, and 1106 Wind Energy Pass for the City of Batavia applicant. Resolution 20-98-R, variation from the subdivision regulations for an extension of the expiration of the final plat of Menard Second Batavia Resubdivision. Resolution 20-106-R, authorizing execution of task order number 21 with Engineering Enterprises, Inc. for the Carriage Crest Recharge Basin, Dewatering Well Analysis Phase 1, Part B. Resolution 20-105-R, amending the Intergovernmental Agreement for Tricrom, Central Dispatch, 7th Amendment. Your Honor, I would move that we approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Moved by Alderman Chancet, second by Alderman Knapp for the approval of the consent agenda as presented. Any comments, questions? Not the clerk, please call the roll. Chanza? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Barron? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Callahan? Aye. Meitzler? Aye. Malay? Aye. Malay? Aye. Ewer? Aye. Cerrone? Aye. McFadden? Aye. Miller? Aye. Rosado? Aye. Beck? Aye. Not. Aye. Okay, consent agenda is approved by a vote of 14 yes, no no's, none absent. Moving then to item number seven, are matters from the public for items not on the agenda? Do we have anybody tonight? All right. Moving then to item number eight, which is the appointment of Brett Garrett and Jared Heck to the Batavia Bicycle Commission uh, with terms to expire on 9 a to 23 and I would note I was asked to do these uh, because we recently, we, as you may remember, we had to leave the Bicycle Commission and so we had these folks that had in, expressed their interest. I'm pleased to appoint them. Uh, certainly, I, the increasing amount of bicycle usage we have in town, I think it's very important that we have a very active commission to kind of watch over things and make us recommendations on things that should be dealt with. So I just for a motion of confirmation of those two appointments. So moved. Second. Moved by Alderman Beck, second by Alderman Wolf for the approval of the appointments of Brett Garrett and Jared Heck to the Batavia Bicycle Commission. Kirk, call the roll. Beck? Aye. Knopp? Aye. Chancet? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Barron? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Callahan? Aye. Meitzler? Aye. Malay? Aye. Ewer? Aye. Cerrone? Aye. McFadden? Aye. Miller? Aye. Rosado? Aye. Motion's approved by a vote of 14 yes, no no's, none absent. All right, uh, moving to item number nine, we are honored tonight to have Margaret Perot, the President and Chief Executive Officer of the Batavia Chamber here, and welcome. Thanks, Mayor. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for letting me speak to you this evening. The Chamber continues to have 
a lot going on, so I have a couple things to review with you tonight. We have um, upcoming events. We have uh, the Chamber is par partnered with the League of Women Voters and is hosting two semi-virtual candidates forums this week. On Wednesday, September 9th from 5 to 9, we will be feature the candidates for the Kane County Board District 10, 18, 14, 12, the Recorder of Deeds, and the Kane County State's Attorney. On Thursday, September 10th from 5 to 9 p.m., we will again feature the candidates, not again, we will have another candidates forum, and we will feature the candidates for Kane County Auditor, Kane County Circuit Clerk, the 16th Ju Judicial District, and the Kane County Board Chair. This forum will be filmed by BATV and streamed live on the YouTube channel BATV 1017, the same one these meetings are recorded on or, or aired on. The Chamber is continuing to offer, offer many network working opportunities and a mix of indoor and virtual options. Our dynamic leads groups are meeting weekly, both outdoors and virtually, to support each other's business growth. We are continue, continuing to provide educational webinars for our members so they can be informed and educated on what resources are available to them. Our upcoming events also include our BC Squared Batavia Chamber Breakfast Club that we host monthly. It will be held virtually on September 9th, tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. You have to register on our website. Our Batavia Women in Business After Hours Networking will be September 10th from 5 to 7 p.m. on River Street. This will be hosted by River's Edge Bar and Grill. The Batavia Women in Business are collecting donations for Starfish Animal Rescue. They're a not-for-profit organization in town that is dedicated to saving animals from kill shelters and finding them good homes. Networking It will be held outdoors in the courtyard of Riverside Receptions and hosted by 25 North Coworking on Wednesday, September 6th at 4.30 p.m. <laughs> But our spotlight charity that evening will be Fox Valley Food for Health. Come join us. We are having an exciting ribbon cutting ceremony celebrating Elder Day Center's uh, new edition uh, of business for um, Home for Seniors Helping Seniors on September 17th at 1 p.m. Stop by a ribbon cutting and buy a mum to support the Elder Day's annual fall fundraiser. Our multi-chamber B2B progressive networking outdoor event will be held September 23rd at 8 a.m. Bring a chair. We are beginning our nine-week Lunch and Learn series. 11 area chambers have partnered to provide great information to help in all areas of business. Join for one of these seminars or all of the informative sessions. They are held on weekly on Wednesday from 11.30 to noon. The first one will be held September 23rd. We will be, it's called kicking things up on social media and is presented by our own Jamie Sam, the owner of Local Connect and Bulldog Plumbing. She will be discussing virtual relationships and providing insider tips on live videos and paid ads. <laughs> on September 24th, we will be hosting a webinar on maximizing board effectiveness for all nonprofit leaders and board members. On October 1st at 4.30, we'll have another ribbon cutting for a business called asafereturn.com. They're a new member to the chamber that provide affordable plexiglass panels. We'll have our monthly not-for-profit forum on October 7th. And then we'll have our annual harvest celebration on Wednesday, October 7th at 7 p.m. at Oscar Swan. We're so pleased to announce that Harriet Parker is this year's Donna De La Sassi Award winner. Harriet serves as manager of the Illinois Small Business Development Center at Wabanzi Community College. And she has helped countless Batavia businesses before the pandemic, and since the pandemic has been the go-to resource on how businesses can survive. Donna Dallas Assey was the chamber president from 1983 to 2000, and we are proud to honor her memory with this great award being given to Harriet Parker this year. We are limited to 50 guests, so please register on the Batavia Chamber website. We are limited. I know council had approved that we could host this event on Water Street, but it turned out it wasn't feasible. So we're gonna have it at Oscar Swan, which is a member of our chamber. So it'll be a great evening. I wanna remind you that the chamber is still offering chamber bucks. Those are gift certificates that can be used at all participating restaurants or particip participating businesses in Batavia. 
they come in $10 increments. You could call us or you could order, um, come in, stop in and order them. Uh, if you need a product or service, always go to the Chamber's website and look at our online directory. We have some wonderful businesses that support our community by investing in our Chamber. And I want to thank you all for your time tonight. I want to introduce one of our um, exceptional members of the Chamber. Does anybody have any questions before I introduce our member? What time does the thing on the 7th start up at Oscar Swan? 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock. Okay. Yes. Abby? Um, is there a way for the public to submit questions for the candidate forums like we would in live settings? Yes. The League of Women Voters is handling the questions and um, if you go to our, our chamber site, there's a way to submit questions in advance. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I had a call this afternoon from one of the residents up the homestead who heard about that and was wanting, there won't be, there's not a public place that they can come to and witness it. It's all no. Right, it's going to be restricted for the candidates being in person, the legal women voters Is there a specific web address we can give out that will tell? So it's the same one that BATV airs these council meetings on. So it's the YouTube channel for BATV 1017. Okay. And then it will also be uh, streamed live on their YouTube channel as well. Because there's a lot of people have myself being one of them have a limited technology and you tell them to go to this and some of them are very challenged by this whole thing so I just I'm trying to be as supportive as we can on this and so I hope I may call you tomorrow with some more definitive sure. and ask questions because the guy said he may call me back today after he saw you were on the agenda and he wanted me to ask you this oh good good yeah I'm glad you did to clarify so that people know how to watch it and uh, All right. join in because there's a lot of, I, I detect there's a lot of interest in the election, and so there's people wanting to know about all these names on the ballot and who they were, and think it's a great idea that the League of Women Voters has again stepped up and is going to do this, and appreciate the Chamber's involvement. But we got to just make sure we can tune them in. That's yeah, right, right. We really want to get that information out there, so we will make sure it's clear. Thanks. Thank you. So I want to introduce Lorena Reeder from Reader Translations. She's a member of our Chamber and lo has a business located in Batavia. Reader Translations is a top leader in the language services in personal and professional needs by providing with excellent, reliable customer service and translating proficiency. Lorena was a reliable resource in helping businesses in town translate the applications to English for grant funding, and she has been there for those that needed her. I'd like to invite Lorena up and let her tell you about her amazing business. Welcome. Yeah. Um, I would like to thank Margaret um, in the Batavia Chamber of Commerce for reaching out to me and providing me this opportunity um, to be here in front of the City Council and talk about um, my services. Uh, my name is Lorena Reeder, and the name of my business is uh, Reader Translation Services, R-E-E-D-E-R. -E -E um, Reader Translation Services strives um, to break barrier of language and connecting people and community around um, the world. We work with all types of individuals and businesses looking for Spanish, French, Bulgarian, and English, English translations for personal and professional use. Um, we can be reached at uh, by calling 630-253-1776, or they can reach us on our website at www.readertranslationservices.com. Our hours of operations are Monday through Saturday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Um, I chose um, to be here uh, because we love Batavia. Uh, my kids go to school in Batavia. We work in Batavia. Um, uh, when our family and I, go, uh, my family and I go out, we try to keep it within Batavia. Um, all our, our uh, we like to interact and uh, with residents and local businesses. Um, I think Batavia has a variety of cultures that need uh, connections, and read a translation can do, uh, do that, just that. Connect Batavia with other cities, states, and even countries around the world. Um, this will bring and uh, maintain the revenue within Batavia, impacting uh, the, our economy in a positive way. Uh, my plan is to grow uh, my business within five years, um, so I can be able to rent a space where uh, people can come um, 
uh, with their ideas and, and, and business propositions and we can help them while they can keep focused on growing their own business. Um, some of our major clients are Kane County Health Department, Hanover uh, Park Township, uh, Prevent Child Abuse of Illinois in Aurora Meadows. Um, this past month, uh, due to our outstanding customer service and proficient work, uh, Reader Translation Service was honored and humbled to receive an accredited A rating from the Better Business Bureau. Uh, the services and languages that Reader Translation currently offers um, are uh, Spanish, English, French, and Bulgarian. The main one is Spanish due to the large uh, population of Latinos in, in the county and country. Um, some of the services that we provide um, are interactive conversations. Uh, we translate environmental health and safety guidelines and regulations. We do PowerPoint presentations, bulletins, internal communications, marketing materials, uh, newsletters, real estate um, listings and contracts. We also translate books, diplomas, and help um, businesses uh, translate their website. I would like to close again uh, by saying thank you for providing me your undivided attention and the time to, uh, to talk about services my company provides and if you or any if you know anyone with business or need of a translation please uh, refer them to me thank you do we have any questions I'd like to ask you just a couple because when you're the mayor you get various things asked of you over a period of years I had a lady call me maybe three four years ago and she was going to be visited by her cousin who was coming here from Bulgaria and she wanted to know, did I know anybody else in Batavia who could interpret Bulgarian language? I wish you had been around here. <laughs> and I remember her particular situation was she was going to have coffee and something to eat at the house. And she wanted to find somebody who could come to her house and sit there for a couple hours while she and this cousin got to know each other. Would that be something you would be doing if, if somebody called you? It's interactive, yes. Yeah, we do that. You do that? Yes. Then I had another person call me rather recently. I'll see if I can remember, dig them out. And they had two or three letters that they had gotten in Spanish. And they were trying to find somebody who could, it looks like you could interpret those and for a price per letter or per word, you would do it for them. So that's, it's good to know we got you here because this comes up more frequently than I would have ever imagined of people who have these questions about languages and need somebody to be the intermediary between them and wherever, however it's been presented to them. So it's good to have you around. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, uh, moving then to item number 10, which is ordinance 20-53, establishing a date, time, and place for a public hearing and convening a joint re review board pertaining to the Near East Downtown Tax Financing District. Alderman Chancellor, do you have this one? I do. Actually, Your Honor, I'm going to take number 10 and 11 as they are related to each other. Okay. <coughs> uh, Ordinance 53 uh, is regarding the establishment of the date time uh, for the public hearing. Uh, this is for the, and it is prescribed by, by Illinois State Statute, uh, for the Near East Downtown uh, TIF uh, District and Redevelopment Plan. Um, as we learned in committee, the ordinance is calling for convening the Joint Review Board and voting a representative from all the affected taxing districts on Thursday, October the 1st at 10.30 a.m. Uh, the board meets at City Council Chambers located uh, here on the first floor of uh, City Hall. <clears throat> the board is responsible for reviewing the public record and planning documents uh, regarding the proposal. And we are establishing a date of the public hearing uh, by statute this is uh, monday november 2nd at 7 30 p.m that will be held uh, here at the city council chambers um, as for ordinance 54 this is establishing a registry of interested parties basically um, um, and this is also uh, required by a, a statute um, that people can be notified if there are specific changes, uh, proposed uh, redevelopment plan changes, substantive changes to the proposed uh, or existing redevelopment plans, or amendments that um, result in proposed changes, specifically if they're affecting um, uh, residents uh, with inside the uh, district. So um, we discussed this in, in committee, and if there are is there any discussion, uh, otherwise I would move that we approve Ordinance 20-53 to establish the 
uh, time and date of the public hearing and convening of the Joint Review Board. Any questions, times, questions? We have a, are you making that a motion? I am making the motion, sir. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and second for the approval of Ordinance 20-53, establishing a date, time, and place for public hearing, <clears throat> convening Joint Review Board for the Near East Downtown Tax Increment Financing District. Further discussion? Clerk, call the roll. Jansett? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Barron? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Callahan? Aye. Meitzler? Aye. Malay? Aye. Ewer? Aye. Cerrone? Aye. McFadden? Aye. Miller? Aye. Rosado? Aye. Beck? Aye. Knopp? No. That vote was 13 yes, one no? Yes. Okay. Moving then to item next item, which is uh, item 11, ordinance 20-54, authorizing an establishment of a tax increment financing interested parties registry and adopting registration rules and form for such registries. Alderman Chanton. Your Honor, then I would move to approve ordinance 20-50. Second. Moved by Alderman Chanton, second by Alderman Cerrone. Uh, any further discussion? Clerk, call the roll. Chanson. Aye. Wolf. Aye. Barron. Aye. O'Brien. Aye. Callahan. Aye. Meitzler. Aye. Malay. Aye. Ewer. Aye. Cerrone. Aye. McFadden. Aye. Miller. Aye. Rosado. Aye. Beck. Aye. Knopf. No. Ordinance 20 54 is approved by a vote of 13 yes, 1 no. So we got those two complete. Uh, move to 12, which is resolution 20 104 R, intergovernmental agreement with Batavia Library into IPBC. Do you have this, Alderman I do. Uh, Your Honor, the city joined a risk pool back in 2016 uh, to help manage our health care costs. Um, the uh, group is uh, the Intergovernmental Personal Benefit Cooperative. Uh, so back in March, the public library, Batavia Public Library, approached the city uh, saying they'd like us essentially to sponsor them uh, so they could join with their 24 eligible employees uh, to join the pool. The city has 194 uh, participants and adding the library um, um, uh, is required because uh, we're already um, a member of the group. It does have the potential to affect um, our premiums. We did discuss this at length in uh, the committee meeting. Um, staff was asking to move forward with an intergovernmental agreement to allow the library to essentially join uh, the pool with us. And if um, I recall, the only thing I had left out in the discussion was that um, the library is responsible for its portion of the premium separate than us. We don't pay one bill and get reimbursed. Right. Uh, did I leave anything out, Laura? No, you didn't. Yeah. Um, if there's no additional discussion, I would move that we approve uh, Ordinance 20-104-R, an intergovernmental agreement with the library. Second. Moved by Alderman Chancet, second by Alderman Knopp for the approval of Resolution 20-104-R, <coughs> Intergovernmental Agreement with Batavian Library. Uh, any further discussion? Clerk, call the roll. Chancet? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Barron? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Callahan? Aye. Meitzler? Aye. Malay? Aye. Ewer? Aye. Cerrone? Aye. McFadden? Aye. Miller? Aye. Rosado? Aye. Beck? Aye. Knopp? Aye. Motion is approved by a vote of 14 yes, no no's, none absent. Okay, moving to item number 13, approval to waive formal bidding to a contract with Siemens Industries to process oil dehydration and degasification on the McKee Street substation transformer number one. So, uh, Your Honor, this is routine work, but we uh, it is work that is uh, highly specialized, so we will look into way formal bidding and just go with Siemens. So I'd make a motion, no, I'd make a motion to approve waive or waiving of formal bidding to award contract with Siemens industry. Second. Moved by Alderman O'Brien, second by Alderman Knapp for the approval of resolution or approval to waive formal bidding on a contract for Siemens Industries to process oil dehydration and degasification at the McKee Street substation. Any further discussion? Her call the roll. O'Brien? Aye. Callahan? Aye. Meitzler? 
Aye. Malay? Aye. Ewer? Aye. Cerrone? Aye. McFadden? Aye. Miller? Aye. Rosado? Aye. Beck? Aye. Knopp? Aye. Chanzet? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Barron? Aye. Motion is approved by a vote of 14 yes, no no's, none absent. Moving to item 14, which is resolution 20-101-R, approving task force order number 11 with Siemens Industry to process McKee Street substation transformer number one oil for oil dehydration and declassification for an amount not to exceed $26,388. Alderman O'Brien. Yes, Your Honor. As I said, this was routine work. We had some issues with Transformer 1 with uh, an oil buildup and uh, a gas buildup. We're just looking to, uh, you know, uh, not an oil buildup, but a water buildup in the oil. So we're looking to take the oil out, I mean, take the water out, take the gas out, and uh, recondition the oil. So I'd make a motion to Pass resolution 20-101-R, approving task order 11 with Siemens Industry. Second. Moved by Alderman O'Brien, second by Alderman Knopp for the approval of resolution 20-101-R, approving task order number one with Siemens Industry to process the McKee substation transformer number one oil for oil dehydration and degasification for an amount not to exceed $26,388. Call the roll. O'Brien? Aye. Callahan? Aye. Meitzler? Aye. Malay? Aye. Ewer? Aye. Cerrone? Aye. McFadden? Aye. Miller? Aye. Rosado? Aye. Beck? Aye. Knopp? Aye. Chanzit? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Barron? Aye. Resolution 20 101 R is approved by a vote of 14 yes, no no's, none absent. Moving to item 15, which is approval to waive formal bidding to award a contract to Siemens Industries to provide equipment testing and, and excuse me, an inspection at main substation. Alderman O'Brien? So moved. Second. Moved by Alderman O'Brien, second by Alderman Knapp for the approval of waiving or formal bidding to award a contract to Siemens Industry to provide equipment testing and inspection at the main electrical substation. Any discussion? Kirk, call the roll. O'Brien? Aye. Callahan? Aye. Meitzler? Aye. Malay? Aye. Ewer? Aye. Cerrone? Aye. McFadden? Aye. Miller? Aye. Rosado? Aye. Beck? Aye. Knopp? Aye. Chanzit? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Barron? Aye. Motion is approved by a vote of 14 yes, no no's, none absent. Moving to item 16, which is resolution 20-102-R, approving task order number 12, with Siemens Industries to provide equipment inspection and testing at the main substation for an amount not to exceed $27,959. Alderman O'Brien. Again, Your Honor, this is routine uh, work for the equipment. It is specialized, highly specialized work, so we are going with Siemens again. So I'd make the motion to approve resolution 20-102-R, approving task order number 12 with Siemens Industry. Second. Moved by Alderman O'Brien, second by Alderman Knapp for the approval of resolution 20-102-R, task order number 12. Any discussion? Kirk, call the roll. O'Brien? Aye. Callahan? Aye. Meitzler? Meitzler? Aye. Malay? Aye. Ewer? Aye. Cerrone? Aye. McFadden? Aye. Miller? Aye. Rosado? Aye. Beck? Aye. Knopp? Aye. Chanzit? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Barron? Aye. Resolution 20-102-R is approved by a vote of 14 yes, no no's, none absent. Moving to item 17 on our agenda is approval to waive formal bidding to a contract with Siemens Industry to perform tap charger maintenance for transformers at the northeast and southeast side substations. Alderman O'Brien. Again, you're on a routine maintenance. Uh, we're having Siemens do it, so I would make the motion to approve uh, waive formal bidding to award a contract with Siemens Industry. Second. Moved by Alderman O'Brien, second by Alderman Knopp for the approval to waive formal bidding with Siemens Industry for the TAP charger maintenance at transformers at the northeast and southeast substation. Any discussion further? 
I might note, uh, just for anybody that's listening, the council spent a lot of time at their committee meeting last week going over each and every one of the details of this, so we're just not rolling a bunch of stuff through here and granting some special, this is very complicated and complex uh, equipment, it takes a long time and you gotta make sure you got the right people doing it or we'll have problems that everybody in town will know about and feel the results of, and we don't want that. Alderman Knopp, you want to add something? We had an opportunity to, before tonight's meeting to go over and, and tour the Northeast substation, the new one that's not online yet. State-of-the-art equipment, and if you're going to spend that much money on this kind of equipment, you're going to spend the money to take care of it. This will last us, I think they, they said the equipment that they're taking out of Paramount is 60 years old. And the company that's taking it out is going to be using that for training purposes. 60 years this, this equipment has lasted. We need it to last another 60 years, so it makes sense spending this money. You know, and I just might add with that, the, as we were discussing, I was discussing with Gary that the equipment would last even longer for what we're doing to monitor this equipment. So as it has breakdowns, the breakdowns are less severe to the equipment. And so... This equipment could last upward of 70 to 80 years even. And so the, the money is well spent. I mean, it's, it's uh, approximately uh, $88,000 that we're spending on the three ordinances. And so, uh, I mean, I think it's, it's dollars to donuts because when things start to break down, it's, we get into the hundreds of thousands of dollars to, to do repair work and replacement work. As we're doing with the Northeast substation and taking out the Paramount substation, and reworking that, I mean, that's, we're in the millions. And so uh, that's what we've been discussing all these things for the last year as, as we're just doing it incrementally. So I just, you know, we do discuss this and this has been going on and, and this is stuff that's very important to maintain our, our electric utility, which we've all discovered on the, the walk today that we have a state of the art utility. And so we've, I, I left there feeling very proud of our electric utility and, and things that we're doing there. So I guess I would make, did I make that motion already? Yes, yes I did. We could just get a vote on it. Now. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, motion and second on the floor to uh, waive formal bidding on a contract with Siemens to uh, perform tap, charger, maintenance for transformers at the Northeast and Southeast substations. Kirk, call the roll. O'Brien? Aye. Callahan? Aye. Meitzler? Meitzler? Aye. Malay? Aye. Ewer? Aye. Cerrone? Aye. McFadden? Aye. Miller? Aye. Rosado? Aye. Beck? Aye. Knopp? Aye. Chancet? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Barron? Aye. Motion to uh, waive formal bidding is approved by a vote of 14 yes, no, no's, and unamps. Moving to 18 on our agenda, which is resolution 20-103-R. Approving task order number 13 with Siemens Industry to perform tap charger maintenance for three transformers at the northeast and southeast substations for an amount not to exceed $34,049. Alderman O'Brien. Again, Your Honor, this is routine maintenance. Changing the tap changes, uh, uh, what they would, I would call would be zincs onto uh, a boat's uh, prop uh, line where you know, the electrolysis in the water would attack the, the lesser metal and leave the, 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 the greater metal alone. And so they, uh, we sacrificed the lesser metal. We're sacrificing this tap changer to protect our transformer. Uh, I'd make a motion to pass resolution 20-103-R. Second. Moved by Alderman O'Brien, Secretary Baldwin, not for the approval of resolution 20-103-R on the task order number 13 for the Siemens uh, Revoring the maintenance on the northeast and southeast trans substation transformers. Any further discussion? Kirk, call the roll. O'Brien? Aye. Callahan? Aye. Meitzler? Aye. Malay? Aye. Ewer? Aye. Cerrone? Aye. McFadden? Aye. Miller? Aye. Rosado? Aye. Beck? Aye. Knopp? Aye. Chancet? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Barron? Aye. Motion is approved by a vote of 14 yes, no no's, none absent for resolution 20-103-R to be approved. You know, Your Honor, may I just say one thing Certainly. too, just uh, we have two 138 kV transformers and one in the southeast and one in the northeast and this is uh, what they're protecting also. Okay, 
As on cue, uh, Griffin Price is here to present to you the results of the National Community Survey. And just at the moment we needed him, he walked in the door. <laughs> so uh, Griffin, we'll turn this over to you. All right. Uh, so I had sent out the uh, more detailed information uh, this uh, past Friday for you guys to kind of peruse over. Uh, however in-depth you want to get, you let me know. I'm happy to go over any of it with you, go into all the details, uh, but most of it can be explained uh, at the end of the technical appendices. There they go over uh, how they did the survey, why it's scientific. Uh, the National Research Center uh, works with ICMA to compile all the cities and counties that are in this list that were compared to on a national benchmark. Uh, something that we opted for as a city, if you recall back uh, when it was voted upon, was to do the demographic uh, subgroup data as well as the geographic subgroup data. And then we had an open-ended question uh, and then we had a couple custom questions as a city. So we'll kind of go over those at the end. Uh, this is the presentation that they would normally give that they put together. Uh, and this is going over the uh, key findings that were part of it. And then uh, I'll go over just a couple other things at the end uh, that are interesting and I think of note uh, for council to take into consideration. So we can start off. Uh, so community livability, the National Community Survey, that's what we're looking at. So we've got safety, mobility, community design, inclusivity, engagement, health and wellness, economy, utilities, parks and rec, natural environment, education, arts and culture. So this is our first time participating in the National Community Survey. Uh, so we did a sample of 3,000 households and we ended up getting 1,157 return, which is a 39% response rate. And I asked uh, the company and typically what they see is about a 25 uh, to 30% response rate. So this is really great that our community uh, was able to give more and maybe some of that was due to COVID people being at home. Uh, but either way, it gives us better data. So that's great. And then we have a 3% margin of error. Um, and that will show up later in some specific questions. So once again, this is kind of what we covered. Uh, we also had it in Spanish and uh, an online link for those who did not want to mail in. All right, this just kind of shows you uh, where everything is sent out uh, over the years that they've collected data. Uh, so this is who we're being compared to. This is really great uh, for the national benchmarks. 34 of our questions uh, scored higher ratings, which would be anything that would be uh, good up to excellent for residents responding to something uh, that they think the city is doing, uh, higher than the national average, and then 104 within the line, and then two that were lower. And then when we do our custom benchmark uh, that did uh, communities equal uh, to 30,000 up to 50,000 in population, we had nine higher ratings, 99 similar and four lower. So still pretty good. This just kind of shows you on the scale of importance and quality uh, for livability where uh, residents place stuff in the responses. Uh, so we kind of are in the middle of the road, uh, but we can definitely see that people are thinking about the economy, utilities, natural environment, parks and rec, health and wellness. Uh, but people saying that we have a very high quality of safety and a very high quality uh, inclusivity and engagement in our community. So keep finding one. Batavia is a desirable place to live and residents feel a strong sense of community. And this is a scientific finding. So this is great to say. <laughs> So nine out of 10 residents, uh, according to the survey in Batavia, uh, rated it. Once again, we're using the statistic or uh, the measure of good to excellent uh, is what we're saying with residents responding. So overall quality of life, they're saying good to excellent. Neighborhood is a place to live. The city is a place to raise children. And the city overall is a place to live. Education, arts, and culture, uh, six in 10 or more uh, support the arts public library services, availability of affordable quality childcare and preschool and K through 12 education. Just a side note, I don't know if you can read that at the bottom, anywhere you see one of those stars uh, is higher than the national benchmark when you see that. All right. 
So a sense of community, 82% saying that it's great, 81% saying there's a sense of civic and community pride, 79, neighborliness of Batavia, 76, residents connection and engagement with their community. This is really great to see. Uh, overall customer service and treating residents fairly is higher than the national benchmark on people, how they're feeling um, that employees are doing and that they're being heard and, and understood, which is really great. All right, key finding two, safety contributes to the overall quality of life in Batavia. So if we look at this next slide here, uh, people felt that the overall safety is good. They feel like their neighborhoods individually are good and they feel safe downtown and in our commercial area. So all great stuff. Nine and 10 felt they felt, said they felt safe from property crime, violent crime, fire, flood, other natural disasters. And safety services, these numbers are so great. It's 96, 95, 91, 91, 87. Uh, this is really showing that our police and fire here are not only well respected, but perform at a high quality level that people asked among all seven different wards at an even distribution uh, are seeing the value here. So that's fantastic. All right, key finding three, residents are generally pleased with mobility and enjoy the ease of biking and walking in the community. Not too much of a surprise here, but we'll continue on. All above the national benchmark. So ease of walking, our guys in the streets department that are taking care of sidewalks, snow removal, street cleaning, uh, biking. I mean, all this stuff is kind of what we're known for, but it's good to see it reflected uh, in our residents as well. And then we had people four and 10 uh, would carpool and then seven and 10 walked or biked instead of driving when they were asked about alternative modes of transportation. So this is kind of showing us that people are uh, taking these other options and they take them seriously. Um, when people were asked for focusing in the next few years for mobility, they said improve walking and improve biking opportunities. I believe those were the two highest. Keep finding four, Batavia's economy is a high priority for residents, especially in the current climate. This doesn't come as much of a surprise uh, considering the pandemic that we're in, uh, but people did have a lot to say about this, whether it was open-ended uh, or if it was just responding in the survey. So nine in 10 rated the economy as essential or very important as a focus area for the city. Economic health, uh, you can see here again, People are saying, hey, economic development, we're, we need to do some work. Overall economic health, we're doing okay, but we still need to think about that. As a place to work, it's good. Overall quality of business, it's good, but we can see that this key finding is really an area for growth. Uh, and we can go deeper into those numbers you know, at a different time to kind of highlight maybe some of those problem areas. And so we've got four in 10 positively rated the vibrancy of downtown, employment opportunities, cost of living, and only two in 10 uh, said the economy will have a posit positive impact on income. Uh, and potentially the way that that one is worded, people could be thinking about the economy as a whole, uh, but still that is a number to take note of that only uh, two in 10 people are thinking that. So these are the special topics. So we said, how important do you think it is for Batavia, the city, uh, to focus on each of the following in the coming two years? So this was a custom question. So uh, it goes from top to bottom on level of importance. So economic development, number one, fill commercial vacancies, uh, number two, improve walking, three, parking, uh, four, five, build a second bridge, improve biking opportunities, remove dam but preserve depot pond, attract a hotel. Source of information, uh, this is a little more for me and putting together a communications plan that's based off of uh, more than just kind of hearsay and interviews, but to actually get some data on this. So if we look at where people are getting our uh, information, we're seeing the city website, number one, Neighbors Magazine, number two, the e-newsletter, three, social media, word of mouth, local media, um, and Sadly, BATV is, uh, was, the, was the lowest option there, but getting that out, I think, on the different channels is counting as social media and having the links available on the website. So they're still viewing these different contents, but this is where they're going first in this priority order. 
Uh, so we said in an open-ended question, and you guys have the responses where it's every single response, uh, everything that they typed out and submitted, but this is to summarize all of those responses. Uh, if you could change something to make it more attractive, what would it be? Number one is downtown improvement, that's a third of the responses, then mobility and infrastructure, then parks and rec facilities, affordability taxes, housing, utilities, community diversity, specific population needs, and then uh, some residents that weren't sure. So as a conclusion, just on the base level, Batavia is a desirable place to live and residents feel a strong sense of community, so it's good to see that confirmed. Uh, safety contributes to the overall quality of life in Batavia, remembering that the fire and police uh, received high uh, values and uh, recognition. Residents are generally pleased with mobility, enjoy the ease of biking and walking in the community, and from what we saw, that they might be looking actually for more improvements in that area. And then Batavia's economy is a high priority, especially in the current climate. Does anybody have any questions before we go into the other specifics? Any questions? Continue forward. Alrighty. Ah, yeah. Oh, me. There you go. Uh, if you'll open up the technical appendices and scroll nearly to the bottom. I want the last few questions of the survey. Oh, go up a bit, sorry. Little more, little more. I think it's under there, the custom benchmark questions. Maybe not. <laughs> um, you wanna check the table of contents at the top, maybe it'll say where we wrote the custom questions. I wanna show you guys the response to uh, should we build a second bridge if it costs X amount of dollars to point out something interesting there. Uh, go to page 21. It might be at the very end of complete survey responses. Okay. Go up a little bit. Those last ones might just be demographic questions. A little more. There. Yep. Build a second bridge. So the question was, the city is exploring the option to build a second bridge. To cover costs, the city would issue approximately 20 million in municipal bonds, a lump sum like a mortgage, uh, which would require homeowners to pay an additional $230 uh, dollars of property tax per year on a $300,000 home for the next 20 years. How much would you support or oppose the city increasing property taxes to build a second bridge? So while the opposition uh, is a higher percentage. This is still uh, kind of a split here on how residents are feeling about this issue, which is no surprise knowing the history of the city. Uh, but it's something to think about uh, if you guys ever wanted to do a referendum question, if you ever wanted to have something to base off of, hey, let's revisit it, if you thought about revisiting it. Uh, and then when we come down to the bottom, the next question there, um, we do have people saying over 50% uh, that it's something uh, important to think about, <laughs> but then once again, we have people that say, you know, not important at all, uh, but we have other areas that are rated higher for the city of Batavia to be focusing on, uh, and as noted earlier, economic development uh, and filling the vacancies where we did those highlights. So I just wanted to point out those uh, custom questions, and then if you haven't already, uh, please read through the responses that residents gave. I found a lot of those uh, pretty insightful, and they've done them alphabetically, but 
uh, you can group together pretty quickly what, what people are looking at. And uh, good ideas, bad ideas, uh, it's just good to have that stuff for us to look at. So what's great about this, uh, being able to go in depth, of course, uh, we can use this to base a lot of projects in the future and a lot of, uh, uh, honestly, strategic planning at kind of any level. You can reference uh, the demographics, you can go by your ward. Uh, for those of you that are specific, want to find out exactly how your ward is feeling, the distribution was split up evenly. And when you go under the geographic uh, sub comparisons, it'll show you what your specific ward percentage wise thought compared to everybody else. Uh, and you can kind of see what's an issue uh, for your ward. So that's really amazing too. Uh, what's recommended for something like this would be to do it every uh, two to three years because the even better value that you can get from this, obviously, is coming back to it and seeing the increase. And you know that it was done scientifically, you know that it was done in the same manner, and so you can actually compare them and say, this, this is true. This is either an increase or a decrease on how we're doing as a city. And look, I can also check my ward. Did I increase that area in my ward where they were only 40% positive about something happening? Or did they go down even more and I've let them down uh, in this way? Or have I made them excel in this area? We improved this park, we improved this way that they can have access to some of our utilities. So just things to think about, uh, but I would recommend at some point we revisit and think about how often we want to uh, be surveying the town and finding out answers to these custom questions and seeing uh, the progress and the benchmarks. Uh, but overall, guys, I think it's a really impressive result. The city of Batavia has come through in what we think about it stereotypically in terms of a positive neighborly community, but we've also reinforced areas uh, that we've improved on and areas that we're learning about that we could do a little work on as well. And it's just nice to see it done anonymously and collect it all together. So if you have any questions and you want to talk about any of the areas, I'm happy to either explain or go over anything else that you'd like to know. Not. What surprised you most in these findings? Uh, it's not so much a surprise so much as it is uh, having all of it to look through. So I've read all of these top to bottom so far, uh, and I'm seeing a lot of similarities into kind of how we're doing leadership and how city council is operating. Uh, so I say, okay, the data is looking accurate based off of how we govern, which is good because we're not getting a big surprise in that way. Uh, we are seeing a few of these a little affected by the pandemic, but I think a lot of them are just uh, issues and, and feelings that Batavians have had the entire time. And the fact that fire and police are rated so high in a time like this, I think is even better than if we weren't during this time. So. Uh, I don't know, not, not so many surprises so much as it's great to have a baseline. When we do any kind of survey and it's not scientific, uh, you can look through the supplemental survey. That's what the other document is. That's the one that we put online for about four weeks in July. And anybody could answer that one. Anybody could answer whatever questions, anything. And there's some interesting data that's there as well, uh, but it's not done through the way where they randomize the sample five times and then evenly distribute it through the wards. Um, so when you're seeing this, this is truly the first time that the city of Batavia has had a scientific statistical baseline that you can say this is how we're doing as a government based off of the people responding. And with honestly a nearly perfect 3% um, population size that you're looking for to get the best uh, survey result when they do a sampling. So. I, I think this is just a wonderful document, uh, multiple documents, to be looking at and thinking about when we plan forward. And like I said, a lot of this too is gonna come in uh, later when I'm putting together kind of a strategic communications plan where we say, hey, this is where people are getting information, this is how people are feeling, these are the initiatives that we should bring forth uh, just from my area of expertise on how to reach people better and to make people feel uh, better about the community. Will, will this be released to the public? And if so, kind of what's the plan for, for that rollout? 
Yeah, we just we kind of just did an overview. Uh, if anybody you know wants to know more specifics, you know, feel free to FOIA, and you know, we can send stuff out. Uh, this stuff I think is a lot more interesting for you guys to look at and develop off of. Um, and then for people that are curious, you know, of course, you know, it's, it's public information. On the drone. In the uh, in the comparisons, was it uh, national and? every type of municipality or did they narrow it down to this is how we compare to other um, medium size uh, municipalities? So that's why we did two and why we opted for the, uh, the subgroup that does 30 to 50,000. Uh, so we are compared at that level and that's where we had the nine that were above that average and then we had the 99 that were within the median and then we had the two that were below and then on the national one where we compared to everybody in their database that one was where we had i think 46 higher i can't remember the numbers off, right, off right, my right. head for okay. that one there, it separated those out. Okay. yeah that was a concern of mine making sure that we, that we had that in there before <laughs> uh sending it out because obviously you want to know how you're doing to the people that are our most right. comparative population so I, I, actually, there were a couple things that did jump out at me as, as a surprise. I sat there and I read through some of the raw stuff. <clears throat> I would like to come back to some of that. Have you guys had a chance to aggregate any of it, or is that maybe something that we could do, uh, like at a future meeting at the committee level? Because there, there's some great nuggets yeah, in, sure. in in the raw raw responses that I didn't even get through. Um, all of it. I, I will say that it did jump out of me that there are a lot of people angry with uh, the city for things that are not the city's fault. Uh, <laughs> schools, parks, libraries, taxes, and mm -hmm. some of things like that. Um, I will also note that, um, and one as far as releasing the studies, don't don't wait for someone to FOIA it. This is good stuff. If just post it. I mean, I, I don't know if anyone here is ashamed of the data, but I'd say just 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 post it. Um, and as far as uh, three of the things that were surprising to me, hotel not rated high. I'm a little shocked by that. I expected, but then when I sat and thought about the way the question was asked, the average Batavian does not need to use a hotel. There are some very specific segments of the Batavia market that need a hotel and they rated it as essential and would probably be using it all the time or recommending that their employees use it or, or, or travel and whatnot. I was a little surprised that the Depot Pond rated as low as it did and that if a referendum were held today and people had to pay for a bridge, that there is less than half um, uh, support. Um, so if we can tear into some of those numbers and understand them better, some of these projects are, are going to be funded or discussed very soon. If we need to tap the brakes on them or make adjustments to them, that's important to note. And you did also offer <laughs> to talk more about the economic data. Let's absolutely spend some time at the committee level to tear into some of the details on um, uh, uh, economic improvement because there's a lot of material that we can learn from that. So thank you. We spent a lot of money on the survey. I want to make sure that we get all of our money's worth out of this thing because I absolutely want to do the survey again. Thank yeah, I, I think it was terrific. Uh, and once again, this is the or the uh, presentation that they provide. Uh, but I'm kind of still, like you said, aggregating through the data myself. So I'm going, oh, okay, you know, this is an important number. This is without outside the margin of error, you know, per ward. Uh, we can really get into it, and that's you know part of my job is is to do that. So For sure. uh, yeah, absolutely. If we want to you know divide it into different sections, if you want me to kind of put comprehensively you know what I think are highlights, uh, if we want to have a subcommittee to kind of review all of this and then uh, present it to the council to where we really think uh, the the differences are statistically important, then you know I th I think that would be great. Oh, you know how I feel about subcommittees. Of course, I would love to. <laughs> <laughs> And I will know, Elliot, if you're still on, on the phone, uh, Ward 3 rated highest for uh, governance in connection with their their <laughs> aldermen, so we probably need to make us a, a trip out to the, uh, the home start again. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Anybody else? Well, thank I, Griffin for a very nice job. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Excuse me. I, I like oh, I'm sorry. Alderman. Yeah, I find it really intriguing that 77% of the people responded that an increase in downtown economic development is either essential or very important, and I would like to think that we're going in the right way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of like what I said earlier is that, you know, while there are these great nuggets, overall the survey is showing us positive feedback, but also a, uh, I forgot the word, I had a great word to use, I forgot it, <laughs> but we're doing the same 
as where we think, uh, where the residents are thinking we should be going to. So I, I think that's a really good sign. <clears throat> you know, I think uh, historically you'll find, I've been here 28, 29 years in Batavia, and when we got here, they've been doing these, these uh, services, we've been doing it ourselves, but historically, you know, the renovating and, and, and invigorating our downtown has always been top of the list. Has been always highly rated by the residents. And I'm, I'm, I just think that's something we should, as a council, start to focus more squarely on and, and be more proactive towards that. This will be a fantastic tool for reference, for guidance, uh, direction, strategy. This will be really helpful. And like I said, seeing the results of this and really when you get into the depth of it, uh, in my mind, there's no question not to do this two years from now and take a look at the results, even if we don't do it four years from now. Just looking at a two-year comparison to see how the progression is, is happening. Um, I would agree with Dan that I think we should get this posted and let the community have access to this and not have to put our staff through FOIAs on this. I think it should be something that should be out there. <laughs> the community paid for it. They should get to see the results of it. Mm -hmm. Agree. For sure. My only thought with it, I mean nothing in the way of transparency, uh, only to say maybe we should be highlighting the significant spots, and then they can still go through the entire of what we have, but for people that don't want to go through the mess, they can go, oh, here were the spots where percentages were pretty different, or here were the top findings, um, along with the PowerPoint. But yeah, yeah. like I said, there's, there's not even anything to be really upset about in here. This is a, a really good survey response. Well, and I'd rather have you concentrate on doing other things with this than having to put together a FOIA response for right. somebody. Yeah. For sure. I, I, the, uh, slideshow that you showed us beforehand that they prepared I mean would that be the high level that you would recommend giving them again not trying to give you more work like let's just give it out to the public like here's the highlight and then if you want more of the granular yep here, here are the, the additional details. documents yeah. yeah yep all right so we'll plan on uh, just kind of doing a press release let the PowerPoint out and then say if you'd like to see more uh, you know please request Okay. I just want to share, uh, Griffin was able to give me a kind of an advanced look at this the last few days, and so I had the opportunity to do that prior to this weekend. Uh, this weekend, as all of you know, I work as a realtor for Baird Warner when I'm not here, and so uh, we've had a lot of business the last few weeks, and a lot of business seems to be coming to us from other parts of the Chicagoland area, specifically probably in toward the city where a lot of people are now saying that they'd like to move out to here, the area. So in the last two days, I've had one person in my office and two from other realtors in the area call me with some questions. And I just thought I'd share with the council the questions that people who are thinking seriously about moving into Batavia are asking. Number one was the clean appearance of our downtown and our residential streets, and is that a normal thing? I said, as far as I'm concerned, it is a very normal thing, and we take great pride in our public works and all the good things that they do. Well, you know, and they even made mention that it looked like on South Batavia Avenue there was a lot of construction, but you can kind of see how nice it's going to be when it's all over with. So uh, I'm glad we projected that image. Another comment that they asked was, is the movie theater going to reopen? <laughs> That's, that seems to be one that's right out there in the face of a whole bunch of people. And I tell them, well, we're hopeful it is. We don't know for sure, but it, it's something the city of Batavia doesn't really have any control over. It's more in the movie industry and folks that own the movie theater. But uh, it's been a very successful venue there for many years, and it seems to be in a good location to draw a regional crowd. So I'm optimistic that that is going to open. Another question was, is the Batavia Library really as busy as it could, looks like it could be if it was really open. And that was their observation. And I said, yep, uh, the library is a, is a, is a admirable part of our downtown and one we're very proud of. Well, it looked like it's a great place, but we couldn't get into it because the door was closed, etc. I said, well, just give it a few weeks and the library will be open. And the other thing that was the visibility specifically of our police and fire departments. And that seems to be a very catchy one with a lot of people and they said, you know, those, those squad cars you got, they're all marked up and you know what it is. And so it's nice to know that when you're living in a neighborhood, whatever neighborhood you're living in, 
a squad car seems to be driving by with some regularity and they're not there because there's crime going on. They're just there to make sure everybody's behaving themselves and things are going good. And the last thing that I got asked was, what's an ISO-1? Because somebody was stopped and saw this on the, <laughs> the marker on the side of our fire truck. And I said, well, that's a good one for you to ask because that stands for Insurance Services Office Class 1, which is a rating that is done on a nationwide basis of every fire department in the United States by the Insurance Services Office. And there are very few that have an ISO Class 1, but we're very proud of the fact that Batavia does have that rating which says that we are as good a fire department as you're gonna find any place in the United States of America. So I've had all these realtors tell me, well, you're really selling this town with all this stuff you got going. And I said, well, I think it speaks well to the quality of the government and the passion and the interest that this council provides in its leadership of the town because it does show, and this is all outside, I wanted to share this with you, it's just all outside people who are not here now, but they're seriously thinking about wanting to be here. And uh, I, uh, I even had a lady call me that said that uh, her mother recently passed away and her father's up in Minnesota and she's really anxious to find some place in Batavia where she can find a condo for him to buy. And so she was saying that she's very interested in seeing whatever's going to happen in whatever parts of town and that she was glad that we do have already available in Batavia some condos in the marketplace that but grandparents, as she said, this is kind of a grandparent chasing the grandchildren, but uh, she wants her father nearer to her now that her mother had passed away, and uh, they're just very in in interested in finding a place in Batavia. So uh, the real estate market in Batavia and Geneva St. Charles is really cooking right now. There's a lot of people that want to get in here, and I think it speaks well to the work that all of you have done over a number of years to kind of set the stage for that to happen. And uh, you know certainly the work in the downtown on both the east side and the west side and all the innovative ideas and some of them I think some of us saw were a little bit off the wall when we did them but they all seem to be really coming together. And uh, Alderman O'Brien and his leadership in River Street I think is a classic one. There was a lot of people that scratched their head on that one but uh, there's a lot of true believers in that now after they've seen what we do. I talked to a woman over at the farmer's market on Saturday and she couldn't stop in her praise for the idea that we have that and how she now has her cousins coming from Rockford and every place else to come do it because it's such a nice, uh, friendly, small town type atmosphere and you don't find that many other places in this world. So thanks to everybody here for all the job you're doing because you are making us shine. Thank you. Well, Mr. Mayor, I might just say thank you for your kind words, but you know, you have been mayor for how many years and I think your leadership kind of directs us in the right direction also. So thank you for your leadership. Right. And the good thing is that the survey reflects staff, reflects elected officials just as well. It's a combined effort and these are the results. Yeah. We have good things going it appears. We do. Thank you. Thanks for letting us realize that. <laughs> do it again. Okay. Uh, <laughs> or the number 20, the administrator's report. Yes, I'd just like to uh, kind of finish out that conversation as to uh, what comes next now that we've done our community survey. Uh, one great thing that we can do with all this information that we've collected is to go back and revisit our strategic action plan that we created in 2018 for the 2019 to 2021 um, period of time and update it because so much has changed. I mean, at every turn in 2020, we get thrown another curve, and we know that um, 2021 is going to look pretty different from when we were considering what 2021 was going to look like back in 2018. Um, the, the, the people who responded to this survey have given us some excellent information to work with as to what they feel should be priorities for us to work on. Uh, the economic development and vibrancy of our downtown, improving our walkability and our bikeability. Um, these things are consistent with what we had back in 2018, but I think maybe we preface the exercise by revisiting the uh, SWOT analysis to identify the strengths, 
weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, and how that looks different today from when it did back in 2018. And so I will try to select a uh, committee of the whole meeting in October where we can use that as maybe a three-hour workshop to um, conduct the same exercises that we did back in 2018 um, and try to work through that and determine how we need to uh, update the strategic action plan, if that's okay with everybody. Great. Um, there are just two other things that I wanted to talk about tonight. Um, at our last meeting, the members of the business community from South Batavia Avenue visited and uh, shared with us their concerns with uh, a number of things that are going on in that area that are of concern. Um, and so since then, two of the items that have been addressed are that um, on the city-owned portion of the parking lot, there are six lighting fixtures there. Previously, they were halogen, which uh, burned more in a kind of a soft white to yellow. And we have replaced those with the brighter LED. And it has made a, a significant difference in the lighting that is back there. We've also stepped up the uh, police presence in that area. And earlier tonight, uh, this is kind of an unusual meeting, meeting at 7.30 on a Tuesday night versus meeting at 7 o'clock. I was here at 7 o'clock and both Scott Queen, who uh, was part of the audience last week, and also Natalie Anderson, who was the spokesperson, were here earlier and she just wanted me to express uh, their thanks for the action that they have already seen, which is making an improvement and how much they look forward to continuing to work on these um, problems together. And so uh, the next area that we're looking at is just the various ownerships of property in that parking lot and how we might be able to collaborate with one another on uh, resolving some of the other issues associated with the uh, state of maintenance of the parking lot itself. Um, and then I wanted to provide an update on the coronavirus relief funding application through King County. Um, last Thursday, US Treasury came out with additional guidance um, trying to resolve some of the ambiguity in the previous um, frequently asked questions that they issued as to whether and to what extent uh, public safety payroll expenses could be co considered an eligible expense under uh, the CARES Act relief fund. And um, they came back and said that they it, it is 100%. It, it was meant to alleviate the administrative burden of having to check call by call to determine what was and was not um, coronavirus related. And uh, so that came out last Thursday. But, um, and then today, the state's attorney's office issued an updated FAQ associated with their administration of their program saying that they intend to follow um, US Treasury's updated guidance. And so that's good news for us because, and good news for them too. I mean, if it simplifies our process for applying for the funding, it's going to simplify their process of having to review those applications and approve the funding as well. They have similar expenses associated with the policing that they do as a county. So it's just too bad they didn't realize that before going through that process. Yes, yes. Um, and uh, that's it, unless anybody has any questions for me. Any questions, Laura? Laura. Yes. On the parking lot, my only question on that was, there was some, back in 2013 and 2014, it looks like we had pretty much gotten easements for the entire parking lot. Is that, I know you sent out that email, but I yes. was confused as of what, are you saying that, hey, yes, it looks to be like we can pave that whole thing and we don't have to do anything else, except there might've been one small property that we did not get an easement from? Um, so, there were easements created back in uh, like the early 2000s, mm -hmm. and, uh, or I'm sorry, 1994. <laughs> and they were for 20 years. 
And when Scott Buning was coming on board, he noticed these are about to expire. And so what he did was not only renew the easement, but remove the sunset clause so that they wouldn't expire in another 20 years. And he was able to get that sunset removed from all but one. So that's the all but one that you're thinking of. Yep. Um, the language of the easements was not changed. He renewed the easements, but he didn't change the language. And when you look at the language, it's like permissive. The city has the, uh, the right to perform the maintenance, mm -hmm. which you wish that was a little bit more clear as to, you know, are they responsible for doing the maintenance? Or is this just saying that if the property owner does not maintain it, the city has a right to step in and do it in the place of the owner of the property. So that's what we will be bringing back to you. But first, we would like there to be a full survey of the area in order to mark out specifically what the boundaries are. Because in some cases, no, in, in all of the cases, some portion of behind the building, and by behind the building, I mean on the west side of the building, there's about a five to six foot strip that there is no easement for that. So when we look toward doing a project where we're going to be repaving that lot, we also want to make sure that uh, we bring the property owners in to say it would be helpful just to do all of it at once. And here is what it would cost for you to do your share of that as well. But the other part of it is you know, how is the city to fund um, repaving that lot? So, you know, the, the creation of the lot was by SSA, but they made no provisions for future maintenance. So we just need to determine how we're going to handle future maintenance. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Go to uh, committee reports, government service, Alderman Chanson. Uh, Your Honor, I have no report. City services, Alderman. Uh, oh. No report, Your Honor. Public utilities? Uh, no report, Your Honor. Alderman Callahan, do you have anything under community development? No report. All right. Do we have other business from the City Council? All right. Well, under Mayor's report, I've already given my report, I think, when I was talking about the real estate <laughs> pickup that we have here. I just would want to add, I, I get people call every now and then, not all, not all now and then, quite often now, asking if there's something they can do to do some, some, something to support the community, make a donation or whatever. And the one thing I will tell you that I am told that we need to continue to, to help is the Interfaith Food Pantry down on South Shumway Avenue, which is right down there next to our, I guess now they're picking up a lot of new clients, people who are suddenly being unemployed or running out of work or whatever have you. So if anybody asked you, is there any nice thing I can do, uh, the Interface Food Pantry would be, I'm sure, happy to accept a financial donation or a bag of groceries or however you'd like to do it, but I would encourage you to do that. I know the uh, Women's Club is planning a, a benefit next week, I believe it is, to, to try to raise some money for them and whatever. So there's, that is an ongoing thing that's a battle they constantly fight, and uh, they're doing a great job great leadership down there and I just want to encourage everybody that has some generosity in their heart to maybe think about dropping a check at the Batavia Interfaith Food Pantry. That being said, Alderman Wolf, you want to entertain a motion for adjournment? I move we adjourn. Second. Moved by Alderman Wolf, second by Alderman O'Brien. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 aye.